Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released macOS Sonoma 14.4. macOS 14.4 Sonoma is available around the world at the same time for everyone, and released alongside watchOS 10.4, tvOS 17.4, HomePod OS 17.4, and a few older updates as well, as it came a couple days after iOS 17.4. Now we have some new features and changes, and the first thing is, this update came in at 3.55 gigabytes for me. This is on an M1. Mac Studio, it can vary in size depending on your device, and if you were on a developer version, this will be a lot larger as it has to fully install the update. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple, go to About This Mac, and you'll see here if we click on Sonoma 14.4, the build number is 23. E214. This is the latest build that just lets you know which version we're on. Let's go ahead and close this, and the first new feature is in Safari. If we go into Safari, maybe we'll load the Apple website, you'll see here at the top we have a bunch of our different favorites. If we right click on this and go to show title, this feature now turns it off and now you just have the icon. You can turn that back on and show the word or you can turn it off altogether. So again, you can show the title or just click off of that and show different things for all of them, such as the icons and text, icons only for all of them, or show both for all of them as well. If we go into our launch pad here and we go over to podcasts, podcasts gets an update here as well. Podcasts has a major update if you're playing a podcast. So let me go ahead and turn the volume down. We'll just go ahead and play the waveform podcast. We'll go into this one. And if we resume it and we go to the three dot menu on the right, we can now go to view transcript. Just like iOS 17.4, we can view the transcript, scroll through it if we wanna look through it. We can actually go in and search for something here as well. So maybe iPhone, we could look and see where they say iPhone and jump right to that point in the transcript. And also to go along with this, not only can you play from a specific point after you've searched for something, you can use accessibility features with text size or increase contrast and voiceover. So you can now use those within a podcast as well. Also something they're standardizing across all of iOS and macOS and more is on the left, you may have already noticed, it says home. It no longer just says listen now. And the same is true if we go into music. So if we go into the music app here, give it a second to load, on the left hand side you'll see it says home. It no longer says listen now. The same is true if we go into the TV app, there's an update here as well. But within the TV app on the left, again it says home. So if we go into home, you've got that. Also, if we go into up next, we now have an arrow next to it so we can see more and see all of them here together as it sort of loads what's going to be up next. If we go back, the same is true if we go to new releases. So if you're in a section with new releases, we can go down, find the new releases, and then go into them and view them all at once. So it's a little bit of an interface design change as well. You may also have a little pop-up or splash screen in many of these apps the first time you go into them. Also, since we have home on the left here, the same is true for one more app. If we scroll over and go into books here, you'll see Books also has Home. So they're really unifying and making things consistent across the OS, and I think that's a great move. Everything's going to seem the same across the apps that you use from day to day. Now, Messages gets a pretty major update this time. Now, there are new emoji in it. That's not the major update, but let's take a look at those. We'll go into Messages, and you can see all of the new emoji here. So what we have is different emoji facing to the right instead of to the left, where we had that before. And we have new emoji as well, such as a mushroom, a lime, a phoenix, a broken chain, a head nodding up and down, a head turning left to right, some family icons. We have a motorized wheelchair facing right a manual wheelchair facing right, some people running, some people with a walking stick, some people kneeling, and some people walking. Again, you can customize all of their skin tones and more, and there's 18 variants according to Apple, 18 people and body emojis supporting facing the opposite direction. The major update with this update is PQ3 encryption within Messages. This is pretty major if you use iMessage and it goes across on your iPhone, on iOS, as well as watchOS. So if we go into Safari, we can take a look at Apple's website about that. And within their website, you can see all about it. They announced it on February 21st. It says iMessage with PQ3, the new state of the art in quantum secure messaging at scale. So it explains cryptography and messaging apps, how they're sort of preventing issues in the future how they've designed it, 
how they've actually proved it out and much more. If you want to read about it, I'll link it in the description as it's quite thorough overall. Another thing they've updated and added, just like they have on iOS, is the ability to see business information. So business updates and messages let you get updates you've opted into, such as order status, flight notifications, fraud alerts, and other transactions from trusted businesses. So they've updated that within messages. Another update they have is if we go into our clock app, within the clock app, if we go down to where we have the timer, we actually have a bunch of new alarm sounds. So if we click on this, you'll see a bunch of new ones that we didn't have before, sort of going along with how Apple updated this in previous versions of iOS. So we have things such as Daybreak, Departure, Dollop, Journey, Kettle, Mercury, and more. If you're someone that uses third-party applications such as Zoom on a conference call, Apple's actually confirmed that you can turn off reactions. If we go into FaceTime, You'll see that within FaceTime, we have different modes and we also have reactions here. We can now turn these off if we want to. So you'll have those reactions as you can see there. We can actually disable these in third party applications. So if you don't want those to automatically trigger, maybe you give a thumbs up and it triggers automatically. You can do this and it will trigger automatically sometimes in the background. If you don't want that to actually show, you can turn those off so they won't work in third-party applications. So Apple's confirmed you can do that, and that update is available with 14.4. Another update has to do with Siri. If we go into our system settings and go down to Siri and Spotlight, under Siri and Spotlight, if maybe we have a different language selected, maybe we have German as well as French or Spanish, you can now use the word hey in front of Siri in order to trigger it and ask for a response. So now that works in those other languages, German, French, and Spanish. Now there's a bunch of bug fixes in this update as well. If we go into the website where Apple actually has their updates, in the public facing release notes, we have quite a few things that are resolved, such as AppKit. There's some known issues still that remain, but also resolved issues in the Finder where it resolves an issue where tiling a window causes the desktop picture to turn black. They've resolved some issues with stickers and messages. They've resolved some issues with pass keys as well as software updates. There's additional updates as well that have been resolved and Swift UI has new features for developers and resolved issues also. So lots of resolved issues in this update, which are great if you're on macOS 14.4. Also, if we go to Apple's security website, on their security website, if we scroll down, you can see all the different releases. And if we go to macOS Sonoma 14.4, there are a ton of updates in this one. So as we scroll down, we have accessibility, admin framework, airport, Apple mobile file integrity, and much more. And as we scroll down, there's actually over 50 security updates with things such as kernel, which is the underlying core of the OS. And you can see the impact here where it says an app may be able to cause unexpected system termination or write kernel memory. To fix this, a memory corruption vulnerability was addressed with improved locking. And then there's the CVE number with someone that helped them find the issue itself. So if we scroll down, some of these were actually actively exploited throughout here, some were not. That's the important updates, but there's lots of updates in here. Everything from WebKit for Safari, Siri, Spotlight, and much, much more. You'll see we're still scrolling through it. So quite a few different updates there. And if you're wondering if you should update to macOS 14.4, well, for these updates alone, I definitely would. All the other updates, while there's some nice ones with podcasts and other things, there's so many security updates in this one, I would definitely update. And as far as overall performance and stability, well, this particular update I have edited a video with, it seemed to work just fine. I haven't had any issues or crashes with it. And so far, things like Final Cut Pro, Photos, third-party apps such as Pixelmator, Craft, and others seem to work just fine. So, so far it's been very stable for me and it should be at this point as we're getting closer and closer to the next versions. Now, as far as when to expect Mac OS 14.5 Sonoma Beta 1, I would expect it sometime around next Tuesday or Wednesday typically. That's what Apple typically does along with maybe iOS 17.5 beta one and others. We won't see any major updates though until WWDC in June, usually within the first or second week. We'll see the first beta there and then a final release typically in September to the public, maybe October for Mac. It just varies sometimes. As far as overall performance and battery life, like I said, performance and stability seem to be pretty good. I haven't noticed a difference there. Battery life, if you're on a MacBook, I really haven't had any issues. 
use. This is not a MacBook, this is a Mac Studio, but as far as my MacBook, we can take a look here, and this is the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air seems to be doing just fine, and I really haven't had any issues whatsoever, as I've said. So as far as that goes, let's go ahead and take a look at the battery health. And within battery, if we take a look at the battery health, it says normal, and we're at 100%. This is a MacBook Air M2 15-inch, so I would expect it to be at 100% still. But overall, it's holding up just fine. So that's pretty much everything for macOS 14.4. Not a major update, but some very important security updates with this. Again, expect the major updates with macOS 15 in June. If you've found anything else, though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed, already though please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time